Hello, I just built my first WordPress plugin using ChatGPT. I'm going to show you how easy it is to use ChatGPT to improve your WordPress development cycle. I'm surprised at how easy it is to use ChatGPT in WordPress development, generating code snippets, and adding everything together to build a completely functional WordPress plugin. If you're looking for this kind of content, this tutorial will guide you on how you can use ChatGPT in WordPress development to improve your productivity. Let's get started. Hello and welcome back to this tutorial on using ChatGPT to build our first WordPress plugin. In this tutorial, I'm going to answer specific questions about ChatGPT and WordPress development. The first question which is, what is ChatGPT? How to use ChatGPT for coding? That question will be how to use ChatGPT in WordPress development. A quick summary of what I'll cover in this video includes a quick introduction to ChatGPT, ChatGPT for coding, which covers the ideas on how to use ChatGPT to write code, to check for bugs, and to optimize your code. Then we look at the general WordPress development cycle. We'll be using VS Code and Git to manage our project. We'll begin by creating the WordPress plugin using ChatGPT code that is going to be generated from the instructions we are going to write on ChatGPT. The main features for this WordPress plugin will include a backend on the widget interface that will have about six text input. These input fields will, of course, include uh, the specific social media input field where users can put the URL or read to be saved and displayed in form of an icon in the front end. For this tutorial, I'm going to create a very basic widget plugin to illustrate use of ChatGPT and how you can adapt it in your workflow in WordPress development. The front end display, I would like to display the icons on the widget as three columns. I'm going to use CSS grid to display each of the icon in a specific grid. Once the visitor clicks on the icon, they should be redirected to social media page. For example, if the website is Jenga and we have an existing social media page, the user should be redirected to that page. I'm going to be using phone awesome icons. I'm going to include them in WordPress and use them to display the icons. By the end of this tutorial, you should be comfortable with building a simple WordPress plugin, a widget plugin. This is the plugin we're going to build to display the social media icons for a specific brand. We're going to have a backend that allows the user to add the social media links, as you can see on the screen here. We'll have a widget title and entry fields where they can place the specific social media URL and on clicking each of these buttons, the user should be redirected to the specific social media page. We begin by answering the question, what is ChatGPT? ChatGPT is a language model chatbot that has been developed by OpenAI. Currently, we are at GPT 3.5. We are testing it as a beta version. And it's simply a bot that you can interact with to answer specific questions or to generate code. To begin using ChatGPT, you need to navigate to openai.com, then look for this page. I have already signed up and have an account with uh, OpenAI. Once you've signed up and you have your account, you can now log in to begin interacting with the chatbot. Here, I have the page you access once you, you are logged in. You can begin typing here specific questions to ChatGPT, like what is WordPress, and it automatically begins answering the question and interacting with you. This, it's not search engine, but it works like search engine, but it's better because it's developed using AI. You can use it to generate code, like you can generate for WordPress function, or maybe loop, and it's going to create a WordPress loop code, and you can use this button here to copy the code in your project. It's not very effective as we've tested it several times and we've seen it doesn't produce as good code as it should, but future versions 
you can expect it going to be improved. It comes with different limitations. We can clear this, this chart first and look at limitations. One of the limitations is it may occasionally generate incorrect information. And in this context, incorrect code. So you cannot rely on it to generate code. It depends on the instructions that you give it. From my experience, you need to hone your skills on using ChatGPT by giving it instructions in sequence. I found that to be one of the easiest ways for it to produce better code. Another limitation is it can, it can occasionally produce harmful instructions or biased content, which I've not come across. It's also limited to the knowledge of the world and events after 2021. Those are some of the limitations and the capabilities are here. And these are examples that you can use when you're interacting with ChatGPT. ChatGPT is a very useful tool. And I think I would compare it to Git Copilot. It's simply a code generator, maybe like or an auto-completion tool, but who knows about the future? We can only speculate. For now, we are going to be using it to build this plugin and testing it its limit to see how good it is in WordPress development. If you are new to WordPress development, it can often be challenging mastering the basics of WordPress development. A good resource to make a reference to is the official WordPress documentation. The plugin documentation is available on this page, developer.wordpress.org slash plugins. Here we have a handbook of the instructions on how to write your first WordPress plugin. If you are a complete beginner, you can follow along since I'll take you step by step on how to use both ChatGPT and WordPress to write your first plugin. I'm going to be making a lot of reference to best practices and I'll, I'm going to point you to specific resources that you can use when you're writing your WordPress plugin. For code versioning, I'm going to be using Git and I'll make this a public project so that you can follow along and access the code for future reference. We now close this tab and we begin our development. Before we begin our development, it's important to point out a WordPress plugin consists of a base file that has a WordPress plugin name. It also has the plugin URL, a description, a version, an author name, and of course a license. That's the first file you create when you're creating a WordPress plugin. For a widget plugin, there exists a class in WordPress that is named WP underscore widget. That class is the class that is responsible for extending the functionality for custom plugins. If you were to create a WordPress plugin, you'd have to have three common functions. I can create a quick template here to show you what I mean. This is my code. We're going to extend the WP widget class. Then we'll have uh, the main constructor. Then we have the form. Then we have the update and the widget display. Those are the four important methods that are going to be within the, the class you're going to create for the WordPress widget plugin. And of course, you're going to register the widget using using this function, register widget, call the, the, the widget. Then you're going to hook that widget on the widgets underscore initialization hook. We are going to begin by creating a, a repo on Git. So I'm going to bring up my Git page here, create a new and click on create a new repository. Then you're going to name a plugin as Slick social media icons. This is going to be our name. Then we can give it a description. It displays social media icons, WordPress widget areas. That's it. We, we are going to make this public. We can have an, a readme file. Then we can have a license, which is the default WordPress license. Then you click on the button to create the repo. And once the repo is created, we have it ready to pull it to VS Code and we begin our development. The next step is going to be moving to ChatGPT to test how good it can develop the fast or generate the fast base file code that's going to include this extended WordPress widget class. Let's now check out VS Code. If you're not familiar with VS Code, it's an open source free tool that you can use for your JavaScript development. I like it because it's very efficient and it does well for WordPress development. We click on this button to 
clone the repository from GitHub. Then we search for it, click on it. Then we select the location of the folder where we want the project to exist in our local in our local environment. I'm going to be developing on the localhost. I've installed WordPress on localhost, so I'm going to select this folder under HDDocs ZAM plugins. Then select it as the repository folder. Then of course I click on the option to open. Then I trust that author. Then I close that first file for introduction of the repo or VS Code. We have our Git setup. We have our chat GPT ready. We now begin writing the instructions. We are going to write the instructions here. We begin by create a WordPress widget plugin with the following options. So we give it the options that we would like to see. The widget backend should have, we do six, six options. And these six options are going to be input fields. So we say six input field options. And we are going to give them a class of WideFat. WideFat is a widget class that is default in WordPress that allows the input field to extend the entire length of the widget. Then other instructions is the options, of course, the options will be, then we say this Facebook, Twitter, then Instagram, then LinkedIn, then YouTube, then Facebook, then we also need to add WhatsApp. So those are the first instructions we are going to give to ChatGPT. We can add uh, more as we first see how it responds with this code. It's good to give it the option of create a widget plugin to display. Let's make it more specific, social media icons. So we click on this button. So here is an example of basic WordPress widget with the name slick social media icons that includes six HTML fields, it repeats the instructions. Then as you can see, it, it begins by creating the plugin first file, which has the name of the plugin, the description, the version, and the author name. It does not add the plugin URL. Then it extends the class WP widget, WP underscore widget, creates a constructor, then adds the description, then it creates the form. This is the display that includes the icons. Then the form, and in most cases, it stops somewhere here. So let's see if it goes beyond that point. As you can see, it stops there. So we have code that this code is not complete, of course. So we are going to uh, look at this code, then add it to our project, then we can see. So we first of all begin by copying this code. Then we open our notepad. We open a new part. Then we save this file or we set it to PHP. And as, as you can see, this file is not complete. So that's one of the limitations of ChatGPT. It cannot completely develop a software for you. It's up to you to understand how to use it. As you can see, the first instruction, it does not complete it. It, it gives us the, the name of the plugin. Then it gives us the class. It does not close the class, as you can see. So of course, this code will not run if you added it. Your plugin, you'd need to improve it further. As I mentioned before, this is a tool to assist you to generate code and to improve your productivity, but it's not going to, to build a complete software for you. A good place to begin is to generate the entire code for a WordPress widget plugin. This is going to give us the guidance on what's missing. We write here, generate code for WordPress widget plugin. So once we generate this code, it's going to give us the missing bits in our code. In this case, we are looking for the update function and the final part to register this widget. This widget cannot work unless it's registered using the method that WordPress uses to register widgets. Once we, 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 we have this code, we can go ahead and give it specific code for it to complete. In our case, the code was incomplete. This function here, the form, is incomplete. 
So we are going to use the auto-completion method of ChatGPT to see if it can complete the missing bits of this code. You can see it, it only gives us the title here. So we would like to complete the other form fields. Then we're going to check again to debug for errors using ChatGPT to see if there are any existing errors once we compile or we put together everything that we need in this code. So back to ChatGPT, and as you can see, it has generated the update function or update method. This update me method takes the new instance and the old instance as parameters, then it passes them through the arguments inside the function to update the old value with the new value once a user changes at the back end. I'd like to bring up this update function works by if we changed this to something else, like maybe anything, and clicked on the save button, the update method updates that value from the old to the new. That's why in the code, you can see it takes in a new instance and an old instance as the parameters. So this is the missing method. But since our code does not have, it's not generic, we need very specific code. We are going to give ChatGPT very specific method. We are going to give it a method to generate that particular code using our existing parameters. We can write something like generate code for WordPress plugin update method, maybe. So let me try to craft something that can work. So we come to chat GPT here. Then we type generate code widget. Of course, we are, we are, we are generating code for WordPress widget. Um, generate code for WordPress widget plugin. Then update. We are looking for update method. And then we can move ahead and give it code, specific preceding code we had in our function, in our previous function. We can give it this code because we are generating update for these particular fields. So generate code for WordPress widget update method with the following form instances. Then we put our code here. So we click on go and see. So it generates the function, the new and the old instance. Then of course it sanitizes the data before saving. Before updating, we need to sanitize data to avoid exploitation and to improve security. It's one of the best practices when you're developing a WordPress plugin or themes. When you're updating data, you need to sanitize. For text field, we use the sanitize underscore text field underscore field function. As you can see, it generates this code that we're going to add to our existing code to complete that last method. So we copy this code back to VS Code down here. So we have the constructor, we have the widget that displays, then we have the form method, then we have the update. So what we are missing is the register method. The, the register, it's not a method, actually, it's supposed to, if we check, it's supposed to register the widget. If you check here, this function is supposed to register the specific widget. So we can copy this outside the class. That's why it's a function. It doesn't have the public or private or protected. So it's outside the class. So you just copy it. You ensure the curly braces are closed. This is the end of the class. Then you have a, we have a register function. Then we need to change these names, but we're not going to change the widget initialization. We can change this function and the callback name here, but you can as well generate it for using ChatGPT. So in this case, we can copy this to ChatGPT and write up something like create a registration for a widget named Slick. Let's see if it works. So that's the code we, we, we need. So we copy this code back to VS Code and replace it with this. We have everything that we need for our widget to work. We can also use several other tools to check if our code is working. But since this is a ChatGPT tutorial, we're going to focus completely on ChatGPT. 
So let's again look at what's missing in our code. First, we have our description here, our class that extends the WP underscore widget class. We have the constructor, we have the widget, which displays the widget. We have the form that creates the form fields, but something is missing. As you can see, the input fields are missing. Then we have this update. We need to generate the code that's missing from here. This is going to test the ability of ChatGPT to complete code for WordPress development. So back to ChatGPT, here we want to generate code for that's missing. We can use the complete keyword maybe. Complete the following code for the form method of WordPress widget plugin. So then we would we would paste the code that we want completed. So back to VS Code, we copy this code. So we wanted to complete that missing code for the input fields for the form at the backend. So we click on go and see if it does generate that code. So it has started at the line of code from where it had stopped in an area code generation. The first time we generated code, that's the point it stopped. It's generating the missing HTML input fields that you're going to add to our existing code to make it complete. Just generated the Facebook, the Twitter field, the Instagram field, the LinkedIn field. Now we need the WhatsApp field for the code to be complete. So it's generating for the YouTube field. We are now at the last part of the code where we are generating the code for the WhatsApp input field. Of course, if you'd like to access this code, it's available on Git. You can click on my Git profile link and you'll have the code. So we copy this code back to VS Code. We place the code before the end. The code, again, the code is not complete. These are the limitations of ChatGPT. The code is not complete, but we can complete the code or we can test it again and bring it up here. Complete this code. It gives us the missing part of the code. So we can copy this back to VS Code and still there's some something that's not closed. Back to ChatGPT to see what's missing. Of course, it's a it's the wrong quote. So we can put this as a single quote. The code is complete. That's how we generate the code using ChatGPT for our widget. Now, after we go through the entire code, we can now save and test the front end to see what's happening, as well as the back end. I don't expect it will surprise me if this is the first time I'm building a plugin like this using ChatGPT. It will surprise me if it can work straight out of the box. I don't expect it to. We now save this code and begin testing the plugin. We have finally put together everything that we needed to make our WordPress widget functional. We are going to first push this code to Git. We open the terminal here. Then we do Git add. Then we check the status. Then we do the first git commit. We name it as initial commit. Then we can check, we see the status. Then we can clear this screen first. Git status again. Good. So we can do a git push. First, we have updated our git repo the first time. We have the code up there. We are not going to update readme. We are going to update it later. So we close this terminal and now head to the browser on our localhost to test the plugin. We check out the browser. Here, I have WordPress installed in the local host for development and tutorials. We go to dashboard, WordPress plugins, then we have the plugin here. We can click on the activate button to see if this code works. We are also going to update the name as well as the description. We click on activate and the plugin activates well. We visit the front end and nothing seems broken. That's a good sign that this plugin should work as we intended. We move to appearance, widgets, then we look for the slick social. Here it is. We have the widget here and it seems like it's working by default. We drag this to the right sidebar and you can see the form is working. We can add to test if it saves that data and we can refresh the page to see if it's saving. And you can see it's saving the data. So the update method that we regenerated from the missing code is working. We can test all these fields to see, to see if they're working. Now we check the front end and see what's happening. The widget is displaying, but something is missing. We can 
right click to see from the inspect element what is missing. So we click and see what's missing. So the title is displayed appropriately. The link is displayed, but the icon is missing. We need to take this to the next step by enqueuing the font awesome in this plugin because by default WordPress does not come packaged with this framework. So we are going to enqueue font awesome. This is the font that's going to give us the icons to display social media icons. We can test here if this will work by again selecting this. I can move this to the right. Then I open up this slick social media icons class. Then I open up this first icon here. Then give it some CSS styles to test if it would work. You can give it a border solid. Then you can give it a width of 10 pigs. We do 100. We can try important. We can add display inline. As you can see, the rule here says display inline. No effect on this element since it should be display block. So we can give it a height and see. The only missing bit is the icon. Once we have the icon there, everything will work as it should. We're also going to work on styling in the next part of the video so that you can style these buttons appropriately. Now, since our WordPress social media icons widget plugin is working, you now need to clean it up, clean up some of the code that we don't need, add comments, and improve the code that we generated from ChatGPT. We begin by creating a better comment for the plugin. We look at our code, we just have this generic WordPress plugin comment. We can generate a better comment using ChatGPT. So we can go back to the browser and we now generate a better comment. We can write something like maybe generate the complete WordPress plugin description or uh, we, we would give it a better term introduction comment code that include, then we give it the, the things that it should include. So it should include, of course, the plugin name and as slick, slick social icons. Then it should also include the plugin URL as my website. You can add it slash projects. Then it should also include the version as 1.4.0. Then it can include the text domain for easy translation of this plugin as slick social media icons should include the text domain as slick then we can also add the license maybe we can make this description better we can add the license we can make this description better by adding a paragraph of the license so we can add instructions also include a paragraph the gpl2 license and i guess that should be it so let's see what we come up with and it does a good job of adding a paragraph of the license so we're going to replace this with our other description so we copy this to vs code and replace this and we can update this name too yeah that name is okay so we can we have the text domain we have the paragraph about the license and our plugin is taking shape. We need to remove the extra PHP opening tag. You have the version right. The plugin adds social media icons to your website. We can say, then we should be good. So we save this and test to see if it works in our plugin here. So we have the plugin description working. The next step is to write better code comments because our code is not well commented. We have code that is missing comments. This will help developers in future who wants to extend this plugin understand what every part of the code does. We get back to ChatGPT and we now generate code comments. So we can write something like write comments for each method in the slick social media icons plugin widget plugin. In this scenario, ChatGPT has the ability to remember or check up the history of the previous charts. It's going to generate comments based on that. We're giving it instructions to write comments for each method in the Slick social media widget plugin. And we can make it easier for 
the instructions to be clear by giving it the methods. You can say methods include, then we update the method. The first is construct. The second is widget. The third is form. The fourth is update. We can close the, the bracket. Then we add more instruction. Also add a comment for the widget registration function. This is the best test for us to see if chat GPT is good enough for code comments or software documentation. So let's see. It generates the codes, the code comments, and this makes it one of the easiest tools to use for your code comments and software documentation general. So we can begin copying these comments, begin with this, add it to our class, then we get the second one. This is the constructor. We add it here. Then we get the third one, the widget function. Then we space it out. We get the fourth one, which is the form method. So we copy the form method, comment, and add it here. Then we have the last method, which can remove this spacing here. The update function. Finally, we have a comment for this function to register the widget. Then we save this. And as you can see, ChatGPT is such an awesome tool for code comments. To make our plugin completely functional now, we need to enqueue the font awesome. We're going to create a folder inside here and name this folder assets. Then we're going to create another folder inside that folder and name that file folder, have another folder, which is going, of course, to be font awesome. That's where we are going to put our font awesome. So we can now generate the code to enqueue font awesome to our plugin. So back to ChatGPT, we can clear this. Then we generate, we add the instructions here, or we can try a different way of doing it. Write a function, write a WordPress, let's be specific, a WordPress function to, to enqueue font awesome. Enqueue should be enqueue leak. We should give it the path where font awesome is located inside plugin folder named assets named font awesome that is is located in a parent folder named assets. Uh, we expect it to do a good job for enqueuing font awesome. So let's see. So that's the code we needed. So this code again, we are going to put it outside the class back to our, our plugin here. And down here, we put the code there. We can also test, we see if ChatGPT can write a comment. We can test and see if ChatGPT is good enough in generating comments for the previous instruction. So let's see. So right, as you can see, it generates very detailed code comments that we can copy into our VS Code, give a proper documentation of our code. So we save this and our code is now properly commented and everything looks good. We have used that GPT to generate the code. We have also used it to write up comments for the code and everything seems to be working as it should. The last bit is to now add the font awesome and test to see if it works. For our icons to show up here, we need to enqueue the font awesome icons. We've already done that and we now have the font awesome enqueued. We can test it by checking in our inspect element and we look for network. Once we refresh the page, we should see the scripts that are loaded. And you can see one of the scripts that's not loaded. It's a 404. The 200 status means that is loaded. So this font is not loading because it does not exist, but we have already enqueued it successfully. So we come here in our VS Code, add a new file, name it all dot minimize main dot CSS. Then once we go back to our browser and refresh, then you can see it's now loading as you can see the path where the file is located. We now need to grab this uh, font awesome CSS, then paste it here and save. Then we can close this, then we refresh. Our fonts icons are showing up, but still they are not displaying appropriately. This is a common problem with WordPress and font awesome. Sometimes it's broken. 
especially if you are using it from experience, if you use it in the downloaded way, it will always have this kind of a problem. A quick workaround for this problem is enqueuing the style directly. This can be done by adding, changing, editing where you've enqueued. So we do away with this. Instead of enqueuing directly through our folder, you can redo this and replace that with something else. You can replace it with the hosted font on Font Awesome website. Then you can change this to Font Awesome. And this tends to enqueue all the styles you need. So we save this and refresh. Now the font Awesome is loading as it should and also the icons are displayed. Since our code here is working and the icons are displayed well, we now need to do away with the previously added CSS file. We can delete this since we don't need it. So we delete that folder. And back again here, we have enqueued this font awesome library directly from what they have hosted on their website. The next step is to now style these icons. To style these icons, we need to use CSS grid. We're going to use CSS grid along with ChatGPT to generate a nice display of these icons. We look at our code and you can see the code here and a widget method that displays the front on the front side. We have six icons. We can display this using CSS grid where the slick social media icons will be the parent and these each and every one of these ones will be the items. We use this code to generate a nice layout. Back to ChatGPT and we generate the code, generate CSS grid layout for the following code. Then we, mod we need to make it very specific. We need to refresh this. So again, generate CSS grid layout, three columns. We need to be specific. So let's copy this and see if it works. We still do not have our style sheet here. We need to first begin by enqueuing a custom style sheet. So back to our code, we first create a new folder, name it assets. Inside the folder, we create another folder, name it CSS. Inside this folder, we create a new file, we name it custom styles.css. Inside this folder, we'll add our new custom styles. We need to now enqueue this file so that we can begin styling the front end. To enqueue this file, we use the same method we created before, but we begin by creating a variable. We call it plugin URL. This should be the base file of the plugin. We can use the constant file, get the root of the plugin directory. Then we can enqueue our style by copying this previous code here. We now remove this. We don't need that font awesome. The name of our style sheet is custom styles. We can now grab this and place it there. Then join it together, the dot, so that we complete the path. And the path will be assets, CSS, and it should be custom styles, or CSS. Then you can complete it by adding the other argument, which is an array, it's an empty array, and a version of one point. This should be a string. 1.0.0. Finally, the Boolean value of true. This will enqueue our custom styles that are going to apply to the front end icons. So we save this and test to see if the file is loading. And as you can see, our custom style is loading successfully. We now need to generate the first code to style these icons using CSS grid. We move again to ChatGPT, then write instructions to generate the CSS grid. So generate CSS grid for the following code. Where the main class, which is this, this class here, this is going to be the parent, where this class is the parent container. Then you can add the code here. By copying it from VS Code, we copy this entire code and see what happens. He has generated six columns, but we need three columns. So we can repeat these instructions and make them very specific. Generate three column CSS grid code. Then we can copy again our code from VS Code and paste it here. We can now copy this code in our style sheet and save to see if it works. We close this. 
and still it does not work you can this at the bottom test and see what's happening here what is this we examine the code again it's creating a css grid using these social media icons so we should see this so we look for the main container here that's where we should apply the rule for some reason still it does not work so there could be a problem with our code so we debug from the chat gpt we look at the instructions again did we get the instruction right? Since there's a problem with how we are loading the file, we need to first begin by examining the code to see if there's a problem. We ensure we have typed this correctly, the name of the style sheet, the path, and the other arguments. Everything seems okay, but I suspect by default, this value is supposed to be false. That could be the issue. Before we change that to false, the default value, we first of all reload this page and examine under network to see if the file is loading as it should. As you can see, it has a status of 200, which is okay. And as we click on it, it's loading. So we simply need to change this to false. For proper documentation of this WP underscore NQ style, you simply need to search in google and find the documentation you can find everything that you need to learn about this documentation as you can see this is supposed to be false by default so once we refresh this it should work the css grid has been applied successfully we now need to add the styles to make our buttons or icons colorful we move back to vs code styles then under this slick icon media icons link, we need to add a padding first. You can do 20 pixels. We need to increase the size to make 1.5. Then we can change the color to white. Then we can add a background color of maybe blue. We can change this color to maybe four, seven, then a, a shade of blue. Then maybe we do a three and A and an H, that shade of blue. Then we save this file and refresh to see if it works. The problem with that issue was related to how we we were enqueuing the files. You can always use ChatGPT to also give you a good documentation. For example, in this case, we would do something like this. Explain what that WordPress function does using as an example. It's going to generate an example for you and some kind of documentation of how that function works. That's a WordPress function that is used to add style sheet, the front end of the website, and it gives you an example. That's another way you can use ChatGPT for your WordPress development. Instead of using this WordPress documentation page, you can as well use it to quickly find out what a function does. Finally, we need to clean up our code to make this plugin ready for users. You're going to clean up the code by looking for any problems that might arise with the naming. One of the easiest places to correct will be the name of our style sheet. This is a very common name and this might bring up problems with other plugins or themes, especially if we submit this to the WordPress repo. You need to rename this to Slick social icons styles widget styles.css. Once we rename this, we need to rename the file as well. We need to save this and check on the browser again if everything is working. We refresh the page to see everything is working. Another feature we may add in a future version for this social icons plugin is the ability to customize the colors and the icons. You can also add more icons for other social media pages. For this tutorial, we are going to limit to only those six. And for future versions of this plugin, I'll add a way to pick up the colors using the WordPress color picker. Back to the code, we need to ensure everything looks good. Seems everything looks good and works. The next step is submit this plugin to the WordPress repo. In my presentation at the beginning of this tutorial, I highlighted the various steps I'll take. I would introduce you to ChatGPT. I would 
talk about chat GPT and coding, how to use it for coding, WordPress plugin development, documentation, VS Code and Git. I've used VS Code and Git and also shared with you how to check the WordPress documentation when you're doing development. I also highlighted the steps you take to create a widget plugin in WordPress. Our WordPress plugin had the following features. It had six inputs for each social media page that include Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, YouTube, and WhatsApp. Each option should allow you to add the URL to your respective page as a user, and they are displayed as three columns on the front end. Finally, in the next tutorial, I want to illustrate how to submit your completed WordPress plugin using subversioning to the WordPress repo. I hope by the end of this video, you've learned something new about using ChatGPT for WordPress development. I've also published other similar videos on this channel. Kindly check them out and give this video a thumbs up and do not forget to subscribe. Thank you and see you next time.